For a show with a cast as big as My Hero Academia, it's hard to fit character growth in for everybody while still making room for our protagonist to learn important lessons about friendship, or what it means to be a hero, or having legs. But in this show, you could argue that other than Deku and All Might, no character has grown more than Yue's own resident icy hot expert, Shoto Todoroki. Controlled by his father at a young age, entering Yue as standoffish and reserved, Todoroki's changed a lot since then. Now, instead of avoiding people, he actually goes on adventures while still wishing he was somewhere else. Which might make him the most relatable character in Class 1A. While we've gotten time to get to know Shoto in the anime, though, his dad is another story, let alone the rest of his family. And to those of you already in the comment section, yes, we're doing this one this week. So as you might recall, at the summer training camp, our heroes were attacked by a group of new villains, including, but not limited to, David Copperfield, the rusty Argonian Blade, the Colossal Titan, and Deadpool. But today we're focusing on the coolest looking of this group, the fire-wielding Dobby. Specifically, the potential relation that people have been tossing around ever since his first appearance. I'm Jacob with Channel Frederator, and today we're once again diving into the hero course at UA to examine the question, is Dobby Shoto Todoroki's older brother? Before we get started though, I just want to remind you of our new anime channel, Get in the Robot. We want to share our love of the medium with you, and we're going to have all sorts of great anime related videos over there. We've already got one video there about Hirowaka, we've got one about Gun Gale Online, so go check those out when we're finished here. Now this theory has had a lot of fuel added to it over time. So there are going to be some season 3 spoilers, as well as some manga spoilers, but I'll warn you about the manga spoilers later on if you want to follow along with the anime. With that in mind, let's talk about the mysterious Dobby. Dobby, Dabby, I'm probably going to flip flop on the pronunciation, uh, go easy on me in the comments. And actually, let's start with that name, Dobby. A name he appears to have given himself as he introduced himself as such in episode 38 with the qualifier, right now, I'm going by Dobby. And when pressed by Shigaraki about his real name, he gets defensive. And if this theory is true, that makes sense. Shoto Todoroki is the son of Endeavor, the number two hero behind All Might. If Dabi is Shoto's brother, then keeping his identity a secret would be smart, seeing as when we met him for the first time, he hadn't committed any flashy crimes yet. If he used his real name and then he was outed as the son of the number two hero, that probably wouldn't have gone over super well with the League of Villains. Furthermore, Dabi is a fanatical devotee of the hero killer, Stain. A villain who believes that true heroism is not as common as the superpowered world of My Hero Academia would have us think. Only truly respecting All Might, and Izuku, as true paragons while vilifying every other hero as he believes they all do their good deeds out of self-interest. And you know, he's kinda right! Whether it's in favor of fame or money or otherwise, there are many heroes that seem to consider heroism to be the least important part of the job. I mean, Stain's extremism falls apart when you realize his goal is to murder all the false idols, but other than that, yeah, he's not wrong. And no one embodies this more than the previously mentioned number two hero, Endeavor. Or NG Todoroki, but we're gonna stick with Endeavor for today. This dude's entire life is driven by his own pride. He forced himself to become so good not to save people, but to surpass All Might. Going so far as to strategically breed his children in the hopes that one of them could surpass All Might themselves, like a frustrated Pokemon trainer farming eggs to hatch one with perfect EVs and IVs. No, I'm not salty for hatching a 50% what makes you say that? So naturally, Endeavor did have a son and he did what he could to be a loving parent and foster this kind of relationship with them so that they could discover their own drive to becoming a hero. I'm just kidding, he's a garbage parent who abused the hell out of his son. With a home life like this, would it be any surprise that one of Endeavor's kids would run away from home rebelling against their father and adopting an ideology that ran directly counter to what they were raised to believe? And let's talk about Endeavor's strategy here. As we covered two weeks ago, quirks are passed down from parent to child. Now, now, what was Dobby's quirk again? Oh, that's right, explosive fire, like two other members of the Todoroki family that I could name. Another thing that's usually brought up is the exchange between Dobby and Todoroki when they crash the summer training camp. It's not much more than Dobby looking at Todoroki while he says his name, but people have noted the dramatic weight of the scene, especially in the manga, insisting that Dobby knowing Shoto's full name has gotta mean something. And as far as Dobby's quirk, there is a lot to unpack there too. First, let's look at his scars. We know that in this show, sometimes quirks can just be 
a huge detriment. For example, you'll never be able to convince me that Tokoyami's quirk is anything but absurdly dangerous to himself and others. But even Shoto, according to his bio, can suffer frostbite when he uses his ice too much. Conversely, it's unknown what would happen if he overuses his fire, but it's pretty safe to say it probably wouldn't be good. But Shoto can thankfully regulate his body temperature by being the embodiment of a song of ice and fire. Dobby, not so much. If we look at the Todoroki children and we assume that this guy is our buddy Dobby, it would be clear that he inherited fewer traits from his mother than his siblings. But some people have theorized that Dobby may have inherited at least one trait from his mother's ice quirk, a considerable weakness to fire, which would have led to his extensive scarring, which appears to be in a very similar formation to Endeavor's fire if we cross-reference the appearance of both. Not to mention that Dobby and Shoto even wield their fire quirks similarly. Could this be a nod to them having the same trainer in similar stages of their lives? Granted, that's not how Endeavor handles his fire, but Dobby and Shoto both have a sort of calm, aloof demeanor to them. Maybe one influenced the other at an earlier age here. But other than how cool they are, is there anything else we can expand on? I mean, the answer is yes, because I mean, look at how much video is left. So I want to bring up something about Hiroaka that doesn't get enough airplay from theorists. And considering that one of the biggest pieces of evidence with this theory is Dobby knowing Shoto's full name, this is pretty important. UA students are celebrities! Okay, that's not totally a fair comparison. I mean, they're not always being hounded by the media except for when they are. UA students, I feel, are analogous to NCAA athletes. They're not quite pros yet, but everybody knows who the ones to look out for are. And Shoto Todoroki is about as close to a hero version of a star quarterback that you're gonna get. Any villain worth their salt is gonna be keeping an eye on him based not just on his performance in the highly publicized sports festival, but also his involvement in the Hosu City incident. You could also write off Dabi's similar form as a result of this. Shoto is a master technician, the Daniel Bryan of quirk users, I've moved on to wrestlers now, because I realized I don't know enough about football to keep that analogy going. It's possible Dobby could have just been taking notes after seeing Shoto in action. That said, it still doesn't explain the dramatic weight lent to the exchange where Dobby calls Shoto by his full name. The logic can be explained away, but not the intensity, so this one is still up in the air for me. Let's move on to the quirk. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed a tiny difference between Dobby's quirk and the other two fire quirks we've been focusing on today. It's also something that I've completely ignored up to this point. Dobby's fire is a bright blue, while Shoto and Endeavor produce a more familiar red-orange color. That said, we have seen Endeavor conjure blue flames while fighting the Nomu in the Hero Killer arc, so that explains it, right? Dobby just has blue flames instead of his alleged father and brother. But hang on a second, there's, there's something funny about Endeavor's flame here. As it turns blue, it becomes more concentrated. And when Endeavor stops his flame, no smoke or sparks or embers or anything emanate from his hand. All the smoke we see is coming from that ashen stump that used to be that Nomu's head. This lack of anything other than the pure blue flame we saw is characteristic of a complete combustion reaction, usually achieved by adding more oxygen to the flame, allowing for less leftovers to form during the reaction. A large part of what gives flames their scattered yellow-orange appearance is because of the incandescence of soot particles formed in the flame out of carbon. Not so with blue flames, where the extra oxygen prevents that soot from forming. This is why most gas stoves use small blue flames, to mitigate the formation of any byproducts of incomplete complete combustion, which can be incredibly dangerous if not dealt with properly. So I guess part of Endeavor's move here allows him to regulate how much oxygen he's producing with the flame, allowing him to condense it to a smaller blue flame, like a walking Bunsen burner. And I think the phrase walking Bunsen burner is probably the most boring way I could have described one of the coolest things we've seen in the anime so far. Dobby's blue flame, on the other hand, has basically the exact same properties as Endeavor or Todoroki's normal flames other than the color. His body even emanates smoke after his quirk is used, implying something other than complete combustion. So this might be a question of what exactly is being burned here, since it probably isn't the same sort of reaction that Shoto and Endeavor produce. A bunch of chemicals and compounds actually burn blue naturally, like methanol, natural gas, and many copper compounds, just to name a few examples. Counter to Endeavor's highly concentrated blue flame, a significantly more untamed flame like Dobby's here would probably require the burning of something like copper or another blue flame producing fuel. With this, you could come to the reason conclusion that Dobby and Endeavor's quirks function in fundamentally different ways, which would hurt the idea that they're similar quirks. If the chemical makeup of Dobby's quirk is completely different from Shoto and Endeavor's, how can they be in the same quirk line? But let's not call the whole theory off just yet. After all, some people are already convinced that this theory is 
100% true, and the question isn't whether or not Dobby and Shoto share the same dad, but whether they share the same mom. And well, if that's the case, then that could explain the differences in the quirks. A new parent would throw in some uncertainty into the quirk department, but here's the thing. I don't think so. If Dobby is Shoto's brother in any capacity, I think the likelihood of them having the same mother would actually be pretty good. Not because of his burns or how he wields his fire, but his eye color. I almost said his hair color. We're gonna get to that. I meant his eye color. Shoto, Endeavor, and Dobby all share the exact same blue eye color. Well, except Shoto, who also has heterochromia, which is a condition where someone can have two different colored eyes, and 10 times out of 10, it looks cool as f also, sometimes he has a red eye and becomes a Terminator, but let, let's focus on the blue eyes here. After all, while heterochromia is passed down by genetics through certain symptoms and diseases, no one else in the family seems to have it, so let's consider it an outlier here. But blue eyes, just like the pigmentation in, you know, everything with humans, it all comes down to the production of melanin, this time in your irises. Meanwhile, we see in the show that Shoto's mom, Rei, has gray eyes. Which, incidentally, is also what it says on the Hero Aka wiki, we only use the most trusted sources here. Gray eyes are very rare, but much like blue eyes, they're attributed to a lack of melanin production. The actual gray color being a result of collagen deposits in the eye, which interfere with how light reflects off of them, which results in the gray tone. It's like the difference between how the sky looks on a bright sunny day versus a dull rainy day, with the collagen deposits taking the same role as the clouds that stretch across the sky. Larger amounts of water droplets in the sky, or collagen in the eye, dull the effect of the light scattering, causing a more washed out gray color. Although keep in mind with gray eyes, the scientific community isn't 100% sure on this since they're such a rare natural occurrence. But because gray eyes are genetically similar to blue eyes and that they both hinge on a lack of melanin production, let's say that they're both recessive genes which both Ray and Endeavor possess. This would significantly raise the likelihood of Endeavor and Ray having a blue-eyed child as opposed to if Endeavor had had Dobby with somebody else. Unless, of course, by some coincidence, they also had blue eyes. I mean, Endeavor could have had Dobby with somebody who had brown eyes, provided they also had a blue-eyed gene, but then the likelihood would be significantly lower. Without knowing the eye color of the Todoroki grandparents, it's impossible to know for sure, but with the parents' eye colors, which will simplify to both being blue, since a gray gene isn't really a thing, we can roughly estimate the likelihood of their offspring having blue eyes to be between 95 and 99 percent, which seems to support not just Dabi and Shoto sharing the same father, but the same mother as well. And while yes, this could be considered an overly simplistic representation of gene inheritance, and there are way more factors we can consider, this is just a small part of today's theory. There is one problem here though, if Dabi does share the exact same parents as Shoto. Why does nobody recognize him? Dobby's scars seem like something that he would have gotten at a young age, especially considering the pressure that Endeavor puts on his children. Still, is it possible that Dobby left the family sometime between this moment and when he got his scars for the first time? Or could it be that I'm just overthinking things and Dobby is just the half-brother of Shoto's? I'll leave that to you in the comments. But if we stick with color for just a tiny bit longer, there's one more thing I haven't mentioned, which is hair color. Black hair isn't exactly on brand with the Todoroki clan. Hell, even in this still where we assume the one kid with his back turned to us as Dobby, that dude's hair is red, not black. But as many people were quick to remind me a couple weeks ago, the tiny manga spoilers incoming, characters dyeing their hair is a thing in Hiroaka since we know that Kirishima dyes his red. And really, Dobby would be totally justified in doing this. It would allow him to further distance himself from his father, not just for the purpose of disguise, but to stop reminding himself that he's the same flesh and blood as the most vain of the pro heroes. After all we've talked about today, you'd think we'd be done, but there actually is one more thing that I want to talk about, and it's something that just happened in the manga like a couple of weeks ago, so the show isn't going to be getting to it for a long time. So if you want to skip this bit and go right to the conspiracy rating, go to this timestamp that I'm showing you right now. Otherwise, I hope you're ready for spoilers. Here we go. That was probably long enough of a buffer. In chapter 191 of the manga, we see Dobby return to antagonize Endeavor before quickly leaving without too much conflict. But as he leaves, we get this panel where Dobby taunts the now number one hero at a particularly low point. The parallels between this exchange and the one he had with Shoto are clearly there. The manga even reminds us of it when Shoto sees Dobby upon his arrival. Furthermore, Dobby says he is eager to talk with Endeavor, as if they have some sort of unfinished business to deal with. Though Endeavor's only knowledge of Dobby is that he's the one who murdered Snatch, the sand hero. There's no family acknowledgement by either party yet. But more than this, we see that when Dobby faced Snatch, he was asked if he ever thinks about the families of his victims, of which include the likes of pro heroes. Especially after that confrontation. And it wasn't until now that we heard his answer, which was, 
I thought so hard about it, I went crazy. Now, if Dobby's a Todoroki, he wouldn't exactly have the fondest memories of living in the family of a pro hero, and this likely would have solidified his resolve in Stain's philosophy that selfish pro heroes have no business living. The families of heroes are constantly suffering, whether it's the pro hero imposing his unrealistic expectations onto his children, or the heroes risking their lives on a consistent basis to the horror of their family members, Deku. These are all thoughts that could swirl through Dobby's mind. Recollecting his past in this way may lead him down a dark path and cause him to go crazy in his own words. The theory that Dobby is a Todoroki, despite all of the nitpicking that I've done today, I feel is actually really strong. And based on the amount of hints dropped in the series and the manga, it almost makes too much sense within the context of the story. Besides, there's already a precedent for dramatic soap opera twists like this in the series, you know, like Shigaraki being Nana Shimura's grandson, so who's to say that there isn't at least one more of these waiting for us in a future chapter? So with all of this in mind on the plausibility meter, despite the differences in the quirks, and despite the questions about his scars, I'm gonna rate the theory that Dobby is Shoto Todoroki's older brother the rating of basically canon, but just despite us, it probably won't be true, of four villains out of five. But what do you think? Do you think that Dobby is Todoroki's older brother, or do you think that people are just grasping at straws and that this is a red herring? Who's your favorite villain in the show? Let us know in the comments. Also, like I said before, if you're a fan of anime and you want to see some more awesome videos, head on over to our new channel, Get in the Robot. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, all that good stuff. Once again, I'm Jacob, and never forget, Frederator loves you.